What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. While they go unused for a majority of the time that you play, your trainer card is a key element to your journey to becoming the best of the best. They keep track of your money, trainer ID, and playtime to remind you of how much time you spent looking for that one shiny Pokemon. Although they can have a bunch of additional features to those, the ones that the most people overlook are the trainer stars. Trainer stars are given out for completing specific big challenges in each game, and in a sense, they're basically a checklist for 100%ing the game. But what does it take to get them all? Today we're going to find out how easily you can get a 4 star trainer card in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. So unlike my other videos, there aren't any challenge requirements or things that I need to mention beforehand, so let's just jump right into it and see how long it takes. Although there are 4 stars maximum that you can have on a trainer card in these games, there are actually 5 tiers. The first tier is the normal blue trainer card. This is the one that you get right at the beginning, so this is by far the easiest one to get because the only requirement for getting one is just existing. But unfortunately, to get the stars in our card, we're going to need to put in some serious work. The upside of this challenge is that you can take on any of these requirements in almost any order that you want. Across all the games, I believe that there are a few that have to be completed before you complete another, but I'll explain that when we reach those specific stars. The first star, and probably the only trainer star that most people have, is located at the Indigo Plateau. The first challenge is to get a record in the Hall of Fame, which I'm sure pretty much everyone has already obtained in at least one Pokemon game they own. There isn't really a lot to say here, because this is by far the most simple and easy one on the list. Once you defeat Gary, you can check your trainer card and see that not only do you have a star above your money, but the color on your card has changed as well. This is pretty easy to miss because it looks almost exactly the same as the zero star card, and considering that you probably check this for at most 5 seconds at a time, it's pretty easy to disregard that. But with that one out of the way, we can move on to the next challenge. The next star on the list is one quite a few people might have obtained when they were younger. Completing the Kanto Pokedex. For the most part, this is a relatively simple task, but let's break it down piece by piece and find out how to get this done. As pretty much everyone knows, there are 151 Pokemon in the Kanto decks, but like every other game, mythical Pokemon aren't a requirement because they aren't normally obtainable in these games. This means that Mew is the only exception, but we still have to obtain the other 150. This is impossible for one game, so no matter how you look at it, you have to trade to complete the decks. The driving point for these games is to either find a friend that has the opposite copy, or to buy another version yourself. This kind of changed once the GTS and Wonder Trading came around, but at the time it was rare for a person to have their decks fully filled out. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, each game is missing 13 version exclusive Pokemon from the Kanto decks, which is a pretty sweet deal. There are a few more that you technically can't get, but I'll get to that in a sec. A lot of the other games have a lot more exclusives than that, and since we have access to breeding, there are technically only 7 evolution lines that we have to worry about obtaining. Some of you might mention that the GameCube side series games would fix this issue, but let's go over why that's not the best idea. Pokemon XD and Pokemon Coliseum have a ton of Pokemon that you can collect and trade to the handheld games, and a lot of those are from the Kanto region. There are a couple issues with this though. This would fix a majority of the version exclusives, but unfortunately not all of them. In Fire Red you still wouldn't be able to obtain the Oddish line, and Leaf Green is actually worse because you can't obtain the Sandshrew line and the Slowpoke line. It's a one Pokemon difference, but no matter what, you're going to have to find them another way. The second issue is that you have to buy an entirely different console and game to make this work. For most people, that's a lot of money to blow on a single game. At the time, the GameCube was $200, and the game would have been $50, which when you compare that to the Game Boy Advance series at $100 and $35 a game, it's a no-brainer. The used market was probably available for much less, but if you wanted to grab a copy at Walmart at the time, this is what you'd roughly spend. The Fire Red and Leaf Green games also came with a wireless adapter, so you'd save a bit of money with that too. I will say though that there were bundles of the GameCube and Pokemon XD for cheaper, but they had pretty limited runs. Once you have that issue figured out, it's time to actually do it. Unlike the originals, you basically have to play through the main game and a majority of the post game, as some Pokemon like Moltres were moved around to promote checking out the new areas added to the remakes. Catching every Pokemon in these games is relatively easy, as there are very few Pokemon that are truly difficult to obtain. The only ones that are bad are the Safari Zone Pokemon like Chansey, Scyther, Kangaskhan, Tauros, and Pinsir. Odds are you have one or two chances at a time to catch one because they have a very high chance of running in the Safari Zone, but it should only take you at most few days of casual play to catch all of them. In addition to the version exclusives, there are a couple more Pokemon that you can obtain in a single playthrough. The fossils and the starters are based on choice, so no matter what you select, you're going to be missing 6 Pokemon for the starters and 2 for the fossils. I know some people are going to mention that you have to choose between Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, but if you breed one of them, you can get Tyrogue and evolve them to whatever Pokemon you don't have. On the upside, both of these choice exclusives don't require you to play a ton of the story, so it should only take about 4 hours to get all the lines onto one game if you speed through it. Aside from those issues, every other Pokemon is really easy to come by. 
In total, this should take you around 30 to 50 hours if you're a seasoned Pokemon trainer, but obviously depending on your luck, it can be a lot more or a lot less. Personally, this only took me around 41 hours to do, but this was just casually playing. I know you're all going to make fun of me for not doing it in 24 hours, so I'll stop you before you finish typing that comment. Once you've collected the last one, your trainer card will update to have two stars and turns into the copper trainer card. Not the greatest looking one in my opinion, but hey, at least you can tell the difference unlike the last two. But the next star is by far the hardest out of the bunch. If you struggled with getting the Kanto decks done, I have some bad news. The next star requires that you complete the National Pokedex, which is obviously a lot harder than the others and arguably the hardest in the entire series. So let's check this one out and see what we're up against. Once again, mythical Pokemon aren't required, so Mew, Celebi, Jirachi, and Deoxys are off the list, but Ho-Oh and Lugia are also not required to receive the star. This means that we have to collect another 230 Pokemon to complete the decks though. Remember how I said you kinda had the choice of using a GameCube or having another Game Boy? Now that's not an option. You need both. Because the Generation 3 games came out during a transitional period in Pokemon's lifetime, the Gen 2 Pokemon were spread out across every current Pokemon game. This annoyed a lot of people, but at the same time this was genius marketing. Anyone that wanted to complete the decks either had to get almost every game or go to Nintendo events to pick up special Pokemon. So taking into consideration that you already own a copy of Fire Red and Leaf Green, you need to get a few more games to fill out the entirety of the Pokedex. Because of the issue with the gold and silver Pokemon, it's suggested that you should get a copy of Pokemon Colosseum to complete the decks. The main reason is that a lot of important Pokemon like the Legendary Beasts and the Johto starters are in these games. You can obtain both of these groups in the GBA games, but that will require a lot of resetting in gameplay as the Johto starters require you to complete the Hoenn Pokedex just to get one of the three. All these are obtainable in one playthrough of Pokemon Colosseum, which would take a while, but definitely less time than completely playing through Pokemon Emerald three times. Since Colosseum contains pretty much the entirety of Generation 2, the only Pokemon that we need to worry about are from Generation 3. Emerald is considered to be the definitive version of Ruby and Sapphire as it has a mesh of the exclusives from both games, but unfortunately it doesn't have all of the Hoenn Pokemon. In a lot of cases when it comes to completing the Pokedex, you could just get something like Ruby and Emerald or Sapphire and Emerald, but this generation was different. Game Freak decided to remove Zangoose and Lunatone from Emerald, which are exclusives for both of the previous games. This means that you don't even want to get Emerald, as Ruby and Sapphire are the best options because of a poor game decision. I know some people might mention that you could get XD and Emerald, but 1. XD is more expensive, and 2. You'd still be missing Surskit and Masquerain because both games don't have them. Funny how that works, isn't it? You can catch a Surskit in the first 10 minutes of Ruby and Sapphire, so you could do the old buy the game, play it for a day, and return it saying you didn't like it. So with this information, you need to buy Fire Red, Leaf Green, Ruby, Sapphire, and Colosseum. I'm sure there's another faster way this can be done, but this will definitely get you all of them, and then some. Just keep in mind that you still need to reset one of each handheld series to get the third starter line that you couldn't get before. Unlike my other challenges, I didn't do this from scratch because I already had most of these games completed, but if you were to do this from the start, this would take you easily 300 hours minimum to catch everything. Considering they had to play every game, sometimes more than once, and plan out catching everything, it definitely adds up. It took me a full two days of training to make this all work out, but once you gather everything onto one game, you've got yourself another trainer star. This is by far the hardest trainer star and national decks out of any game solely because of all the hoops that you have to jump through just to make it work. But with this, our trainer card now is three stars and was changed to a silver card. Really? That's the best they can do? I just bought all their games, at least they could do is just give me a trainer card that doesn't look almost exactly like the one I just started with. Okay, well, the last one has to be good, right? But what do we have to do for this one? The final trainer star that you can obtain is located on Two Island. In this area, there is a small house that looks like another game corner. When you go in there, you can play two games, Pokemon Jump and Dodrio Berry Picking. If you played these games as a kid and had no idea what these actually were, I'm here to relieve that question you've had for 15 years. These games require that you have another copy of Fire Red or Leaf Green as they're little co-op minigames. They're really terrible minigames, so if you were thinking it was something super awesome that you've been missing out on this whole time, you've got nothing to worry about. The final star requires that you earn 2,000 points in both games. Both of these tasks sound easy at face value, but let me explain why they're far from that. Pokemon Jump is literally just double dutch with one rope. So jump bro. Did, did I really just say that? Although it says you have to earn 2,000 points, it doesn't mention that this is in one try, which is a lot harder than it sounds. The first issue is that this is a two-player game, so if you're playing with a friend, you have to hope that they time their jumps correctly or you have to start all over. I did this by myself, which is arguably worse because the games can get desynced and they'll jump at different times. But the real annoying part is the actual minigame mechanics. 
When you start out, the vine rotates slowly, and you'd expect that the vine would just continue to increase in speed. Instead, it will go through waves of becoming extremely fast, and then extremely slow. This doesn't seem that bad, but when you're pressing the A button every second to jump and then the rope just hangs in the air, you'll hit the rope by the time it comes down. Once you get to the hundreds, it'll start to do the opposite. Come on, how would I have expected that? The vine came around so slow. I'm a little embarrassed to say this took me about 2 hours to do, but if you're one of the 8 other people who have played this, you know exactly how hard this is. Well the next one can't be that bad, right? Dodrio berry picking is a competition to see which Dodrio can eat the most berries. Unlike the last game, this requires that you have 3 games, not 2, so let's hope you have another $140 to blow to make this happen. If you had trouble with the last one, good luck. This is just timing your button presses like any other rhythm game, a bunch of berries drop down from the trees, and you have to time the Dodrio heads to eat each berry that falls. You can actually miss berries on this without instantly losing, but if you miss too many berries, the game is over. Getting 2000 points in this is a lot harder because once the berries start coming down in more than one pattern, you have to react insanely fast to not miss them. The amount of ambidextrous skill that you need if you do this alone is insane, but it's definitely possible to do. If the meter at the top of the screen goes out, it's game over. I managed to pull this off about 4 hours, but this was definitely the most frustrating one out of the entire challenge. Once you've done this, if you check your trainer card and now has 4 trainer stars, and you can now flex on everyone with your beautiful gold trainer card. Although the challenge is complete, there is actually one more thing that we can add to our trainer card. On 4 Island, there's a man who gives out stickers that can be applied to your trainer card for completing specific tasks. There are only 3 stickers that you can get, but there are tiers for each one. Each requirement is to defeat the Elite Four, hatch an egg, and win a Link battle. These are all pretty easy to obtain through normal gameplay, so we can immediately add all of these to our trainer card. But the later 4 tiers are where it gets crazy. In order to get the best stickers, you need to beat the Elite Four 200 times, hatch 300 eggs, and win 100 Link battles. Defeating the Elite Four alone would take you at least 50 hours to do. Hatching eggs would probably be near the same amount, and Link battles are the only one you can cheat because you can just give your second game a weak Pokemon so the battle ends really fast. Normally I'd do something like this, but considering that probably no one even knew if these existed before I showed them off, I doubt really anyone cares enough for me to actually do it. I've seen the other stickers, and personally these look a lot better anyways, so I think we're done for today. Maybe I'll come back if you all really want me to do it, but with that, we've successfully obtained a 4 star trainer card in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. And that's going to do it for today's video. I wouldn't recommend this challenge, but if you do complete it, at me on Twitter with your completed card so everyone knows how crazy you are. If you like the video, leave a like as I'll be making more videos soon. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos before they release. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.